Well, let's go to the top end now where a battle between an energy giant Santos and First Nation locals has come to an end in a landmark decision I outlined at the top of the show. A federal court judge rejected claims by a group of Tiwi Islanders that a proposed gas pipeline would damage Indigenous cultural heritage. The $5.8 billion gas project in the Timor Sea has been on hold at the cost of, wait for it, $15 million a month after drilling was hit with a legal injunction. For more on this, I'm joined by the Australian's Environment Editor, Graham Lloyd. Well, Graham, I tell you, reading that judgment from Justice Natalie Charlesworth, she didn't mince her words. She said locals were relying on contradictory and made-up evidence, and she accused the environmental activist group that helped bring the action of coaching the witnesses. What's your take on this? Well, hello, Peter. It's an, an extraordinary and, I must say, welcome judgment from the federal court. What, what's happened is uh, the, the judge has blown the whistle on the way environment groups and academia are exploiting Indigenous communities uh, to further their own interests to use lawfare to restrict uh, developments. Uh, they've slowed this process down, uh, the project that uh, Santos is trying to develop. They've added many, many millions of dollars to the cost. Uh, and uh, the federal court has picked it apart and said, well, this is confected, uh, which is quite an extraordinary judgment to make. Yeah, really strong words in the judgment. You don't often see that from the bench, but that, I think, was uh, heartening for anyone who wants to put a big-time project into this country. Santos now can push ahead, of course. It may well be subject to an appeal. But what's this mean in practical terms? At the very least, what's it mean for our federal budget? Well, I think there's a couple of things that it means. Uh, importantly, it's a big resource development. It will generate a lot of income. Uh, it'll be good for shareholders and pension funds. Uh, it'll be good for the budget. But more importantly, it sends a message to investors far and wide that the court system does work in Australia, that it's going to be focused on uh, facts rather than emotions. Uh, and uh, at a time when companies around the world are, are thinking about sovereign risk, that is a really important development. Well, let's go uh, to the Northern Hemisphere because the UK government has just announced plans for what it's calling the biggest expansion of nuclear power in 70 years. The PM, Rishi Sunak, says nuclear power is a perfect antidote to Britain's energy challenges. He referenced in the statement I read, he referenced uh, Vladimir Putin there. Now, here in Australia, we know a majority of voters in the energy minister's own electorate, well, they want to see Australia's ban on developing nuclear power lifted. So they're ramping it up in the UK. They're not stupid. Yet here, it's not even on the table, Graham. Mm, that's right. And I think the, the best way to look at this is Australia is a good half a decade behind uh, what's happening in the UK and elsewhere. Uh, Ricky Sunak is under enormous political pressure and a lot of it is because of the cost of this green transition that the Tories have been really uh, keen to, to, to prosecute. Uh, in the US, in the UK, across Europe, uh, the hard numbers are coming in about the cost of this transition. And uh, overwhelmingly, they're saying, look, nuclear is a big part of the solution. So we're seeing big investment uh, in uh, the US and the UK to really try and build up uh, the, the industry, uh, perhaps double its capacity. Well, there's one small mercy for a cold winter in Victoria. It's that the lights are still on because we've learnt to, in recent days, Loyang A has suffered a series of outages. Uh, I think it was out for four days last week, four times over four days last week, eight days over the new year period. We also know a lot of our businesses, big industry players, aren't even uh, operating. They're all on leave over January, experts are saying the grid in Victoria is in real peril. It's inherently vulnerable. What's your take? 
Well, I think there must be a lot of sweaty palms uh, around uh, a lot of officers in uh, the political sphere and also in the, the power authorities because all the news is that uh, the, the system, not only in Victoria but, but elsewhere, is very much at the limits of what it can do. Uh, we're getting outages from coal-fired power stations because they're being run down. Uh, they are going to be... Uh, put uh, out of service uh, probably sooner than had been expected and uh, really the stuff to come in behind and replace it isn't materialising. So this is a story we're now hearing, look we're, we're expecting things to be tough and it's not going to be long before we're saying look we just can't deliver the power. This is not going to go away is it Graham Lloyd, thank you.